You saw Ted Jones. What's up, guys? And welcome to the Ted Jones World Podcast. Happy Halloween, the holiday Halloween episode edition. If you're watching right now on YouTube, Spotify, you can tell I got a little Bob the Builder hat situation on. My entire life, though, Halloween, I was never a big dresser upper. Just the idea of getting a costume gives me anxiety. And now that I only wear comfortable clothes, I just feel like, for the most part, if I'm going to be wearing a costume, it's got to be comfortable. I still don't even know, as you guys are listening to this, if I am going to dress up. I had the idea of being Superman. And in the past, I went around <laughs> Union Square Park as Superman. But, like, that wasn't even a... That wasn't even a holiday thing. I was just doing man on the street dressed as Superman. And tonight, am I going to drink? I don't know. So this past weekend, I had what I have. Okay, I had a tequila shot and I had one of those neutrals, which is basically the same thing as a White Claw. I woke up the next morning. I felt fine, but I hadn't drank in. Is that even a word? I hadn't drank alcohol in like two and a half months. And right now, I don't, I'm not really even drinking. I don't enjoy the idea of having one drink. I can understand that maybe it loosens people up if they have one drink. But for me, it just feels like it's a waste of money. It's empty calories. And I don't really enjoy it. Like if I'm going to drink, I'm going to have at least two drinks or maybe even three drinks. Because that's usually what people do when they drink is to have a good time, get loose, feel a little bit different. But the thing is, it's like the hangover of being in a different state than you were last night. Maybe it's like just physically, it could potentially be mentally and somewhat emotionally, but I just don't enjoy drinking. And now that I'm doing stand up comedy most Friday and Saturday nights, and I don't finish until like 1 a.m. on most nights, I just like, I feel satisfied that way. But I will say that it does give you a little bit of extra liquid courage. If you're talking to chicks or maybe girls are listening, you're talking to bros, less social friction i will say i wonder the first people who started to drink i mean it was obviously a long time ago in like the ancient roman empire probably even before jesus so we're talking about bc i also i also never un understood that by the way what's the difference between bc and like bce oh you don't believe in christ you'd be before common era but ad is like anno denomini which like i don't even under understand that really either that expression but anyway okay getting back to drinking um yeah i i did spend so much time in college slugging down drinks like there were times in college where no joke i probably had like 12 plus drinks i would just go to huskies which was the local bar and they had this thing called nickel night excuse my stretching right now where you could get four drinks for one dollar i've spoken about this on the podcast to you guys before but just in case you haven't heard it so myself and three of my buddies would get to the bar as early as possible because you could get into the bar if you were under 21, if you were like a freshman or sophomore and you're 19 or 20 years old, you get to the bar as soon as it opens and as soon as the nickel night deal started, which was at 6 p.m. So we get done at tennis practice, 5 p.m. We'd sprint back to the dorm, shower, and then get to the nickel night line by like 5.45, 5.50. We'd be some of like the first 10 people in the bar We'd get to the bar, drink as fast as we could. We'd just drink three drinks right away. And then like you'd have the fourth drink. So you'd pay $1 and everybody else would pay $1. I'd have four drinks by the time it was like 6.30 p.m. for sure. I'd be wasted. And then by the time like 7.30 p.m. came around, I was lights off, shoes on, in my bed, drunk. That's like, it, college is like a lot of binge drinking. College is a lot of binge stuff. It's binge studying, binge meeting too many people that you're never going to see 10 years down the line, binge doing too much homework. College is tough, man. College is a tough time. But I will say that college is a good time for people to transition. I'll put that in quotes into real life. Because like by the time you're 18 years old, do you really know what you want to do? No. And the fact that you have to pick a major by the time you're 20 and people put so much stress on you like, oh, yeah, you need to know exactly what you're doing. Like. Bruh, to be honest, I feel like I really didn't even know what I wanted to do until I was like 26 or 27 years old. Colonel Sanders, the guy who started KFC, didn't start till he was 65 and all these successful people. But, uh, you know, <laughs> they, that random, very random tangent. But people find uh, what they like to do and uh, everybody finds their own time, right? New York City definitely starting to get cold. You know what? I, I do understand that... Um, in order to start to pay your taxes in a place like Florida, you have to be there 
six months out of the year. You have to be there six months and one day, which I would say makes sense because it's half of the year. But if it was like five months, I think that would be the perfect amount of time because you'd probably go down there realistically once it starts to get actually pretty cold, which is like, eh, you'd say like November 15th. And then you'd probably want to come back up here like, you know, around like May 15th. But you want to come back in between. You want some New York time in Florida isn't always the most fun place. I'm not talking shit about Florida, but I think it goes for saying for any other place that doesn't have taxes as um, heavy as New York. And like, considering New York has a good, probably four and a half months where the weather is awful, where you walk outside and you're like, bro, what am I doing living here? But then you see everything else and you're like, oh, New York is the greatest place ever. Especially like on a night like tonight, like Halloween, if you guys are listening to this episode tonight on Halloween, they got a Halloween parade, everybody's dressed up. And in the past, I've had really scary dreams on Halloween. Like, I, I don't know what it is about the spirit of the holiday, but I'll just have like creepy dreams of, I really hope I'm not even manifesting creepy dreams right now. I hope, <laughs> I hope I'm not even thinking about that. And then also if you got, for you guys listening and watching, I hope I'm not manifesting any creepy dreams for you guys. But I think it sometimes is just the holiday and, and knowing that Halloween is like a scary holiday. Why don't they have an angel type of holiday? You know, as I put on my construction hat here, they got the creepy holiday in Halloween and they should have a, a holiday where everything is like nice and jolly. I mean, I guess you could consider that maybe uh, Christmas, you know, like the day of angels. That's not even Christmas. Christmas is supposed to theoretically be Jesus's birthday, right? Christians, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that if they're having a holiday, like the, and then they have like a day of the dead in Spanish culture, they should have some sort of angel holiday. Am I right? Am I just spewing into the, uh, into the abyss here with that idea? No, I do think that's a good idea. Day of the angels. Dia de los angeles. Oof, bro. Did I just create a holiday? I might have. I might have. Well, guys, you know, I'm on here just uh, doing the uh, weekly diary thing with the uh, the podcast here. And then uh, I did watch some of the Joe Rogan and Donald Trump podcast. And it does seem like, um, by the way, I'm going to be completely transparent uh, to you guys right now. I am not voting in the 2024 election. Why? I really am indifferent about both people who are running for president. And I know people would probably talk negatively about me not voting, but I'm being transparent with you guys. And I did vote in the last election. I just don't feel like voting and I don't really like either candidate. So what? Sue me. I'm not going to vote. I know it's my right to vote, but I just don't want to do it. I don't want to vote for either of the candidates. All right. Okay. Don't get mad at me. But anyway, I, um, I watched some of the Donald Trump and Joe Rogan podcast. And it seemed like Trump, for the most part, he like, he'll, he'll ramble if you let him ramble. He just like, will talk around things. You know, like I, for an example, they were talking about the JFK files and he kind of just came back to the same subject like three or four times in a 10 minute span about how he had read some of it, but he's gonna open it. He's gonna open the files so people can, um, people know what actually happened in the JFK case. But I read half of it, but I didn't even really read half of it, so. I don't know. It's going to be interesting what happens next week. We'll see who's going to be our new president. But I imagine, uh, I don't know, I don't want to predict the election, but I got to say, I feel like Donald Trump definitely has the edge. This Madison Square Garden event. Now, for those of you who know, I live relatively close to Madison Square Garden, but it was insane to see how many people were just waiting outside of MSG, waiting to go into this free event uh, for Donald Trump. And I do feel like the aura around him and the public opinion around Donald Trump definitely within like the last 18 months or probably t two years has changed. You know, like people are less, I mean, people are still critical of him, but people are less critical than they were two years ago. And I think it's because we're far enough removed from the presidency. Like even on this podcast, I remember I was talking about how he would say such immature shit and he was like a child. And anytime somebody would say something bad about him and he was asked about it, he'd shut down that person and say something negative about them instead of maybe putting up his chin and be like, well, I'm not really thinking about them, whatever. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. But I can imagine it's got to be pretty hard if a lot of people are gunning for you and talking noise about you. Like, what are you going to do? You got to come back. Even like at when I get DMs in uh, on any social media app or people write comments that I don't agree with, I try my best to not acknowledge it or not watch it. But everybody's their own critic now. You know, I've talked about this before, but it's not 20 years ago where you watch something on TV 
and you're sitting on your couch and any opinion that you have, you can't really get to the people who are in the TV. Now everybody's got their own TV on their phone. So everybody is uh, entitled to their opinion. Anyone can kind of write whatever they want and they don't even need to have a real profile. They can have a fake profile and then just write from behind um, a blank screen. So nobody really knows who you are. It's kind of like form spring. If you guys remember that or yik yak, I, this is probably, I'm probably talking to the millennials, I guess, or not even the millennials, I guess people who are in my generation, um, for the most part, when I was in college, they had these, uh, online platforms that would allow you to tell things to other people, but without being, uh, without like having a face to the name, like they had this thing called form spring where you can, uh, ask people any questions you want and people didn't know where the questions were coming from or yik yak. You could just write something and then people would vote up or down on it. So it, it, it's weird. It's just like a, a weird time that we're dealing with right now with AI becoming more of a, more of a, Part of our society, AI just leased like a, a huge amount of space in a Fifth Avenue office building. So the amount of things that have changed over the past 10 years technologically has been insane. And I can only imagine what it's going to be like 10 years into the future. I do think a lot of things are going to go robot. And even being in LA, they had these rovers. I don't know if you can really call it a rover, but on the street, they have... I Uber Eats vehicles that are just going down the sidewalk and would go to your front door. It has a camera inside of it and then they're gonna go driverless. But in New York City, I couldn't imagine that in the super near future, they're gonna be able to do driverless vehicles just because think about how many New Yorkers go through stop signs and go through don't walk signs and bicycle riders who never stop at red lights it's dangerous out there other cities i could see where it works where there's like not that many pedestrians walking on the street but new york is it's gonna be um kind of a different place with uh these self-driving vehicles <clears throat> to smoothly transition into the stand-up category uh this month again will be the most amount of stand-up sets that i've done in a month, uh, I do include the open mics in the stand-up sets. Open mics, for those of you who don't know, is usually like a five-minute set that you do. But I will include that because it does uh, does count as touching the stage. 62 stand-up sets. By the time you guys are listening to this, it's almost the end of the month. Uh, maybe it might be a little bit more than 62. Uh, but it's going to be, yeah, around 62. And I feel like... I feel tired a little bit, all right? I'm not gonna complain to you guys, but I do feel like sometimes uh, sometimes I feel exhausted and sometimes I'm like, oh, I want a day off. But it does, um, it does get addicting. And I think that anything that you do that you really love that brings creativity out of you, you're like, oh, I wanna do it every single day. Like for the most part, um, like even posting on social media, sometimes I do feel like I'm posting too much. And I talked with, uh, one of my associates who I always post with shout out Olga Namer, who I do like the Jewish in the restaurant, Jewish in the car, uh, Jewish during Yom Kippur sketches with, uh, I, I do think that sometimes if I'm posting too much, it doesn't give these algos algorithms time to really appreciate the post. So I'm going to slowly start to be posting less on these apps. I'm going to really try and not post more than two times per day. And even, <laughs> even that does sound like a lot, but I feel like posting once a day, it just allows, um, the computer technology and also you guys at home watching and uh, appreciating my videos to, uh, to watch and appreciate. Uh, cause sometimes, you know, I don't, I don't really want to be a, super attached to each video, but I do think there is some validity in posting things and giving it time to naturally progress out into the ether. So other people who wouldn't find it otherwise can find it. Cause I do feel as if sometimes if I'm posting too much, maybe it gets lost in the sauce but I'll look at a page like Barstool Sports and sometimes, uh, on some days, they post 12 to 14 posts in 24 hours. But I think that does change when you get to a certain number of followers and have a certain number of impressions. And right now, I am trying to make you guys happy, who are everybody who's listening and watching to this, and I'm also trying to make new people happy. And hopefully when I get to a point where I have a lot more people following what I'm doing, 
then I can either slow down on posting the videos so more people appreciate the niche avenues that I'm going towards. And uh, I don't feel super, uh, I don't feel a lot of pressure to put more than one thing out per day. But I do feel like at least for the next month or so, I'm going to focus on trying to put one post on Instagram and maybe two posts on TikTok. But there's not really a science, right? Like people don't fully know the science. And if you talk to executives at these apps, there's not, they don't really have a, uh, it down to a science. It's not like you need to post every single day at 5 p.m. Eastern in order to get the maximum amount of views, follows, impressions, likes. It's touchy feely. You got to see what works best for you. And I think in the past or in the past three or four months, I've been posting as much as possible and sometimes posting up to four times a day. I think there even been a couple of days when I posted five times a day. <laughs> and I feel like that's overdoing it. I am taking some of the clips that I posted four months ago and I'm posting it. Uh, but yeah, this is just like, it's an interesting thought because I, we're in a, in a new time, which I've said to you guys before, and people are learning how to use these social media apps to your advantage. Obviously, being a comedian and being an entertainer, the more impressions that I have on posts, the better it will be for me in the future, whether it's getting a job or selling out theaters or just connecting with people that are interested in what I have to put out. So it, it's a mix between posting on these algorithm forums and then also having people see me in person. And I would like to think, and I'm pretty sure I do believe this, I'm a lot better in person than I am online. While I'd still like to think that I'm great online, I'm still, I'm fun in person. So if you guys ever get the chance to see me in person or you see me on the street, say what up. I'd love to say what up. I love it when you guys come up to me and say what up. It always uh, brightens my day, brightens my mood. And like, uh, like most other people, I have my days where I don't feel great. I feel, wake up some days and I'm like, ah, Gosh, darn it, I don't feel good today, you know? But I don't say it in such a positive way. And people ask me like, Ted, you're never, uh, you're never sad, you're never depressed or whatever. But I just, I feel like I hide it better. And maybe I think that's a good thing to do. You don't need to, you don't need to appear sad to other people. You don't need to appear depressed, right? You just gotta do your best to... <coughs> you gotta, sorry, excuse me. I just, I just sneeze. Oh, you said bless you? Thank you very much. You just got to do your best to be the best you can be as I read this sign that's next to my door. And then also, you know what? I'll read it also what it says up here. These are the stickers that are right on my door before I walk out uh, of the door every single day. Ted Jones World Podcast, which is what you guys are listening to. Karma, Documentary Crew, which is something I heard Joe Rogan say in the past. I'm not such a big Joe Rogan listener, by the way, but... If I do listen to a podcast, I'll listen to parts of Joe Rogan or I'll see clips or because he definitely has interesting people on it. And he's also a comedian. So I think I um, I think I relate to him a little bit more. It says documentary crew. So anytime that you leave wherever you're at, make believe like a documentary crew is following you and anything that you do. So you try harder. You.